Hello everyone, welcome to Screen Screen. I'm Viola. In today's episode, we're going to talk about movies related to minorities and childhood memories. I know these two umbrella terms sound so vague. So without further ado, let's listen to the introduction of the first new movie we're going to talk about today, Avatar. When his brother is killed in a robbery. Paraplegic marine Jake Sully decides to take his place in a mission on the distant world of Pandora. There, he learns of greedy corporate figurehead Parker Selfridge's intentions of driving off the native humanoid Navi in order to mine for the precious materials scattered throughout their rich woodland. In exchange for the spinal surgery that will fix his legs. Jake gathers knowledge of the indigenous race and their culture. For their cooperating military units, spearheaded by Gonho Colonel Courage, while simultaneously attempting to infiltrate the Navi people with the use of an avatar identity, while Jake begins to bond with the native tribe and quickly falls in love with the beautiful alien Natiri. The restless Colonel moves forward with his ruthless extermination tactics. Forcing the soldier to take a stand and fight back in an epic battle for the fate of Pandora. They grown from human DNA, mixed with DNA. Wow, the first new movie we're going to talk about today is Avatar. If you love movies, I'm pretty sure you've seen it because it was released in 2009, not so far ago. And I think the reason why it's re-released right now. It's because its sequel is going to be released in the end of this year. Tell you something. Actually, back in 2009, I didn't go to the theater to watch Avatar. Part of the reason was because at the time I was still a high school student, so I couldn't go to movie theaters on my own. Therefore, I missed a lot of good movies, including Inception. Another reason was that I didn't really want to watch a bunch of Blue people running all around. I know this is so not politically correct, but since there's no real people with blue skin, I guess it's okay to criticize Nami. But Nami is exactly the reason why I picked the theme minority for this episode. The planet they live, Pandora. Is a mysterious and intriguing, beautiful world. Nami is very tall, very thin, and very strong. I think you can say that they are the mythological version of indigenous people. They listen to the message the nature wants to give us. They feel the energy and power of the nature. While watching Avatar. U.S. citizens might think about Indians because they promote harmony between nature and human beings. But actually, the communication in Avatar isn't very smooth. After many times of unhappy, unsuccessful communication, Nami still decides to give human beings one more chance. But the plot is not the most charming part of Avatar. People who watch Avatar want to see the beautiful creatures on Pandora, such as the slow-moving fluorescent creature. I don't know what it is. It's similar to jellyfish. They just have a lot of precious animals and plants. Of course, it's fictional, but you can still enjoy watching it. If you plan to watch Avatar 2 in the end of this year. You can go review Avatar this weekend at the movie theater. Now it's time for the second new movie we're going to talk about today, Children of the Mist. D is a 13-year-old girl living in a village lost in the midst of northern Vietnamese mountains. She is fortunate in that she is part of the first generation of kids whom have the opportunity to have access to education. But she must convince her parents that studying is not a waste of time and money. If she can't achieve this challenge, she will be trapped in the village her entire life, just like a frog in a well. Dee belongs to the Hmong ethnic minority, where traditionally women get married very young, some of them from the early age of 12. In this society, marriage is linked to a very particular and controversial tradition. 
the bride kidnapping. When a boy is interested in a girl, he organizes her kidnapping before forcing her back to his own home. In some occasions, this process turns pretty dangerous and dark. When D enters puberty, her personality has changed drastically. The carefree little girl has turned into an impetuous, hypersensitive teenager. She often has arguments with her mother, who is trying to forbid her to have reckless relationships. Her mother worries that her daughter could be harmed or mistreated and won't have enough maturity to handle the situation. On the Lunar New Year's Eve, when Dee's parents come back home after celebrating, the house is silent and empty. Dee has disappeared. Her mother broke in tears, realizing that her daughter has been kidnapped. This may signify the end of Dee's childhood and the beginning of her life as a woman. The second new movie we're going to talk about today is very special. It's a venomous documentary, and I think from what we heard in the introduction, it's a very sad story. The documentary recorded how the protagonist D grew up from 12 to 15. She's a teenager, so of course she wants to explore how to get along with boys. She also aspires love, but she continuously reminds herself that never get married before she's 18, just like her sister. As the director of the documentary, Hala Dim became good friends with D. This documentary won the Teenage Jury Award at the Taiwan International Documentary Film Festival and was the Perspective Change Award at the Visions Do Real International Film Festival. For us who live in a free country. Really can't imagine there are girls who are kidnapped to become somebody else's brides every New Year's Eve. As we heard in the introduction, that D is already very fortunate because she's the very first generation who can go to school. But actually, most parents in her village want kids to help their families farming. They don't support them to go to school. And on one New Year's Eve, D disappeared for a whole night. Her parents finally realized that her childhood is going to end if she gets kidnapped. D is forced to grow up in one night, facing the adult world. This is the director's first feature documentary. She spent four years shooting it. Even though they speak different languages, they are different races. And their ages are apart. She still developed a friendship that's like sisterhood with the protagonist D. The director accompanied D to grow with her sensitive and delicate camera and her heart. At the same time, she also recorded the conflict between new generation and old tradition. That is the sadness of growth of this Hmong girl. This is a very sad movie, but if you're interested in the bride kidnapping culture or you're interested in documentary, I really recommend you to watch it. Now, before we move on to top elbow seven, I have to tell you that this week's chart is very interesting. Before we reveal how interesting it is, let's review what we had from last week first. Top three: One Piece film, Red. Top two, Top Gun, Maverick. Top one, Bully Train. Here we go. Top three, Spirited Away. Top Gun, Maverick. Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. Let me be perfectly blunt. You are not my first. Top two, Brahmastra Part One, Shiva. One Piece film, Red. Apart from the fact that you are only one child, I am my daughter. Top One, Barbarian.
Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Fully trans. Mm -hmm. I am ready. You are getting the new and improved me. Because if you put peace out in the world, you get peace back. Shane Ultraman. <laughs> Wait, all the movies on the chart this week are top 3 to top 1? That's amazing, but also somehow weird. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to cover all the movies on the chart. First of all, Spirited Away. Remember I said the theme of today's episode is childhood memory? As I mentioned previous weeks, this is a movie that I watched when I was little, but when I watched it again when it was re-released this time, it gave me totally different feelings. The other top three, Top Gun, Maverick. Yeah, I know, it's also a little bit weird if I say Top Gun as my childhood memory, because when the first Top Gun was out, I wasn't even born yet. But it was on TV several times, so I can still say that Top Gun accompanied my childhood a lot. And so when I went to watch Top Gun Maverick, it really touched me. Like all the feelings from the first episode all came to you when you watched it at the theater. Top 2, Brahmastra Part 1, Shiva. This is an Indian movie, but Taiwan didn't have any plan to launch it. So I'm not going to cover it for now. The other one, One Piece Film Red. I know it's a lot of people's childhood memory, but I never watched One Piece when I was little. I know it's a little bit rude, but I personally don't think characters in One Piece are cute. I prefer adorable characters, so sorry One Piece, I'm just not interested in your story. But I'm pretty sure for those who watched it growing up, will love this movie. Last but not least, we have three movies as top one this week. The first one is Barbarian. It's a horror movie and it's critically acclaimed, but I don't know why Taiwanese publishers don't want to launch this movie. The second top one we have, Bully Trend, we've discussed it for several weeks for now. It's adapted from a Japanese novel, of course, it's nothing to do with my childhood memory, but it casts Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, of course, he's one of my childhood memories. Any movie with him in it, I would definitely go watch it. Last one, Shin Ultraman. Again, I didn't watch it when I was little. If you want me to name some shows that are similar to Shin Ultraman, what I watched when I was little was Power Rangers. You know, go go Power Rangers. That's something I looked forward to watching every weekend when I was little. So please tell me, are you Team Ultraman or Team Power Ranger? Wait, I was going to say that's all the time we have for today, but I totally forgot that since there's only one section in Top 007 this week, I planned to talk for five minutes in a row. Uh, so how about let's talk about Power Rangers, well, I mean Shin Ultraman. Actually, Shin Ultraman is critically acclaimed, but I guess people who would go watch it are still minorities because I saw some of my friends who went to see it and said it's really good, and that's it. Only the first weekend. But I don't know when Power Rangers movies was out. Because it was really bad, it was a bad movie, so I didn't go watch it myself. But I think more people were interested in Power Rangers. I don't know, Shin Ultraman is Japanese culture and Power Rangers is American culture. And I personally prefer American culture more. But I remember when I was little, we used to play toys. Power Rangers, you know, you can combine them all together. And I remember me and my cousins, we would call ourselves each one character. So I remembered I was either the blue or red one. I totally forget. It depends on which actor was more handsome, I guess. 
but it really was great childhood memory. But kids nowadays, they only play on their phones, watch TikTok videos, and I really don't think that's childhood memories. I doubt if they can still remember any videos on TikTok when they grow up. I hope you all find something from your childhood memories in this episode. And remember to tune in same time next week at Screen Screen. I'm Viola. See you next week.